I am in love with cocky anime characters like Gojo. Wait, that sounded kind of gay. Ah, screw it, babe. Someone as pretty as he is. Is it really gay, though? Who doesn't like an overconfident, tall, fun, overpowered character? If you have ever watched a single anime episode, you know that these characters are the most enticing. But what makes us so enticed to these characters? The types that just doesn't care. Well... Humans love narcissistic fun asshole traits. When you look at all the characters with a different personality in a group setting, the one with the most relaxed asshole attitude is the one that most people are going to remember the most. Of course, the most popular one is the one that everyone's gonna know by mainstream standard is the main character. But if you get into a show, mainly a fighting specific show, even slice of life, the person that's really charismatic and only cares about their own goal is the one that's going to be looked at and remembered the most. No one wants to see some boring humble guy that works hard. We want a guy that has an edgy past and has a tantrum every time something wrong happens in his life. There's a lot of things that will make or break a show and personality is a big one that most people don't talk about. The reason why shonen and fighting shows that are top sellers of all time is because of the group dynamic and the personality behind each character coming together to create a fun environment. I complain a lot about things in anime but one thing that hasn't changed for the worst is the personality that are coming out. Especially the narcissistic ones. Every year it just keeps getting more crazy, stupid, and better. Except for the shonen protagonist who has one dream and they care about other people around them. If you look at people's personality in real life, there are general rules that people have to follow in order to not get into some crazy trouble with the law or being completely psycho or cringe. But if you depict some of the crazy personalities in real life to anime, it could come off as cool and mysterious. And it does this by setting up the timing and camera angle of the scene where the character's expression and emotion can show the most. Romantic comedy are completely cringe if you look at it objectively. That's why a lot of the live actions for these shows are complete cringe even with all the editing wig styling and cutouts you gotta be gay or a female to enjoy some corny shit like this there's a reason why the gender based that watch k drama are overwhelmingly female origairu is a rom-com that has a very weird socially anxious guy and if you look at him in real life you can tell he's strange weird and a bit of a loser but when you watch him in the show you get a better understanding of who he is he doesn't seem weird like at all because of the way that they make his impressions the scenario that the show puts him in and the way that the camera angle pans him out in some scene makes him a very genuine person who has struggled that he has to overcome as a person who has been hurt before but i can almost guarantee you if this was replicated in a drama it would look so cringe and weird this is why i don't think live actions are any good i understand a lot of people like the new one piece film and i hope live action can be great one day i like live action sucks i hope they stop making it the personality and the impact of the emotion is just not there this is something only anime can do because of the way that it's strong don't lie you guys have this too a lot of the personalities and weird ways that people act in real life are hidden and kept in their private time because we all know if we show off these traits it will destroy our reputation and change the perspective on how a lot of people view us and it's not you worrying about what people have to think about you it's more or less that you have to kind of care because you need your image to survive good luck finding a job or have a business with people finding out that you do weird creepy nasty shit but anime can show these odd behavior in a way that's honestly very fun and beautiful sometimes it gives the the audience a better view of how these characters work and can represent real life if you look at it closely enough. The narcissistic traits are cool but it can also show you the dark and sad side of it where you only worry about yourself and your selfish pursuit of happiness. In the end all you have is nothing and all the things that you have done have just caused people pain and suffering. As a person who has lived in America most of my life and I have basically indulged myself in the western culture for a long time, I think some of the psychopathic characters are written so well it matches exactly some of the thought process that I have had and have seen other super confident people behave like it. There's no care for others and they end up with nothing but materialistic things and achievement around them. However, it can also depict how a loving person can be and the struggles that they have to go through to help some people. The only personality that I don't like is the edgy wannabe smart guy. This is just cringe to infinity. It's even more cringe than the people that do Naruto runs and acting like anime characters in real life. If you want to act like one of these guys, you should honestly consider what's wrong with your existence. But even this is watchable. I wouldn't mind it if they make a show that center these characters around a psychopathic person with some sort of mental issues. But they make them quote unquote geniuses and actually have people take them seriously. If this is a genius then I'm straight up God. If these guys are geniuses I'm the reincarnation of Buddha himself. But even I can sit through and watch these type of shows because of the way that anime depicts it. If you take any form of personality or emotions that you can think of anime makes it amazing or at least watchable. And no other form of media can do this. A lot of the time when you get into a show 
opponent it's not even about the fighting it's more about the connection that you have with the characters and watching them struggle through the good and the bad this is why slice of life is so well beloved and i'm not talking about the ones with the born generic rom-com i'm talking about the ones that talks about anxiety sadness of one loss the struggle of life dealing with past mistakes stays with the viewers when we watch it the personality is a big reason that drives people to stay with a show you want to see the character develop and how they can change themselves over time emotion is something that everyone has and personality will come with it some people just have that i don't give a fuck attitude and the way that they express themselves shows it but out of all the personality the one that sticks out to me the most is the normal one but what about the narcissistic shut up it gets tiring after a while hearing someone bragging about how great they are you might be asking what do you mean by the normal ones and what's so special about these specific type of characters nothing in my opinion the best personalities are the ones that are just normal people who work hard it's the boring one that nobody likes it's the one that nobody wants to really talk about it's the people like you who are watching this right now i'll share a little something about myself growing up i wasn't a very charismatic person i struggle with talking to people for a good amount of time it's not like i was completely alone i just didn't get how to be charismatic i didn't get charisma i had this weird bitter energy around me and you pay attention to any social environment there will rarely be that guy but when he walks in that social environment you just know he's that guy he's the guy that everyone wants to look at and pay attention to he got jokes the way that he speaks is super cool to listen to he can make you laugh and have a good time it's how a lot of these celebrities or content creator got famous because they have found an outlet that let their charisma and entertainment talent come through entertaining millions and making a lot of money off of it throughout my time of reading a lot of mangas and watching a lot of anime the reason why i love the super narcissistic fun type of characters like gojo is because it's a type of person i always wanted to be i mean come on guys deep down every guy wants to experience this once in their lifetime even super anti-social nerds when they walk into a room and everyone knows that they're that guy all the ladies are looking at you all the guys wants to be like you i would sit down and legit do research and make studies upon these type of character and the traits that they have so i can be like them in fact some of the corny ass jokes that i make on this channel is me trying to be like them it's a big reason why i even continue with this channel so i can improve upon my charisma here's a light tip what i noticed is if you can make people laugh you can get away with a lot and have people like you but as time goes on and of course i don't know the future i realize that as much as i want to be that guy i don't think i'll ever be that guy not everyone is going to be great and the reason why i couldn't discern the fact that i wasn't going to be that guy for a long time is mainly because of my ego but as time goes on i realize that everyone is just as important and being cool strong charismatic is just another endeavor in life there are many other endeavors the reason why i like the boring personality now the most is that it reflects most people most people aren't great and we need to respect these type of people because they are what holds society together and they propel these exceptionally people to be great characters create the personality of a person and a lot of traits that normal people have is boring for the most part most people aren't talented nor are they exceptional and maybe i'm just a weak person with a weak mind but i find these traits to be very endearing now more than the super entertaining strong person i also think it's also tiring to be that guy constantly you always got to be ready for the jokes and you can't have any form of solid values or belief system that you follow because you got to try to please as much people as you can if you have a belief system there's going to be a lot of people that don't like you or don't want to fuck with you simple as that and once things get serious you have to act upon your beliefs and that can lead to a lot of people not vibing with you anymore that's why a normal person is so great to me you get to see their everyday struggle and it's relatable everyone wants to have a cool story everyone wants to be on the top everyone wants to be popular every kid every gen zer pretty much everybody wants to be a content creator right now everyone wants to be fucking famous everyone wants something special for themselves so they can be strong and have people respect them and not look down on them but what about the people that keep society up what about the garbage men the firefighter the people that work the boring ass jobs they might not be the main character but sure as hell they can be relatable and i'm done trying to be someone that i'm not i'm not super cool or talented and that's okay i'm not one of those super famous anime youtuber who goes into an anime convention sits in front of the stage and everyone loves me i'm not a famous person who has 10 security guards walking by me and everyone wants to talk to me now i'm okay with myself and who i am now now i still want to be cool who the hell wants to be a normal boring ass person i want to be respected and valid by other people and prove them wrong 